Hey, what's up everyone? So in this quick video, I'm going to show you how to sign up for the cloud IDE called Code Anywhere. And I'm also going to show you how to set up your Node and MongoDB environment within Code Anywhere. So the first thing you want to do is go to CodeAnywhere.com and then go to sign up. They've got a bunch of different really easy sign up options or you can do it by email. So confirm that you're not a robot. If you have trouble with CAPTCHA, uh, maybe because you're behind a proxy or something to do with the internet in your country, you might want to try and do it with a VPS. I've heard of students having issues with that on other platforms, um, not code anywhere, but it is something that may happen with reCAPTCHA specifically. Anyway, just confirm that you're not a robot and then register. So it's saying that we signed up successfully. Uh, we can go straight to the editor, but first you want to go to your email and confirm. So you'll have an email here, just click the link. And now that you've verified your account, you can go straight to the editor. So we can close this other tab. The first thing they want you to do is create what they call a container. Uh, this is like creating a workspace uh, if you're used to Cloud9 or C9. So we'll call this one uh, WDB. You can call it whatever you like. And then I'm going to search for the mean stack. So just type in mean and it auto populates right here. We want the mean stack version for Ubuntu 14.04. And we'll click create. So this may take a minute or a couple seconds or a few minutes. So just let this load until the terminal pops up and the container on the left hand side has uh, or the workspace whatever you want to call it has the file menu and then they have like a greeting message with some information about the container so we'll go ahead and let that load okay so it's now officially loaded like I said uh, the file menu is over here we've got two tabs open up here one of them with information about our container Go ahead and leave this one open. We're gonna need it whenever we come back and test the container. Um, and then this other tab is a terminal, it's a bash terminal. And then on the left hand side, we have our file menu. You'll notice there's already a bunch of files and folders in here and we don't need them, but you don't have to get rid of them because I'm gonna run a script in a second that'll do all that for you. So if you go to my GitHub where I have the instructions, I'll put this link down in the video description, but it's just my GitHub at github.com forward slash NAX3T forward slash code anywhere dash instructions. So this is basically everything we've already done. It actually needs to be updated with a couple steps, but the important thing is copying this segment of code right here where it says inside the terminal, paste the following script. So we'll go ahead and copy this and then we'll go back to code anywhere and inside of the terminal we're gonna paste it so you can use command V control V if you're on PC or edit uh, where's the paste option you can just right click and paste if you want so I use command V on Mac and give it a second to load the whole script up and you'll notice now we're on this dot forward slash setup sh right here it's waiting for me to run this line so I just hit enter and now the script is going to run and it's going to do a lot of stuff so it's going to shut down uh, any MongoDB instances that are running there aren't any but it's just kind of a safeguard and then it's going to install the latest version of MongoDB which at the time of this recording is 3.6.1 I believe it's also going to delete all these files and folders over here on the left hand side uh, that's stuff that came with the container because it is a mean stack container they assume that you're building a mean stack app so they have a bunch of extra stuff in there we don't need it so I went ahead and removed that I go ahead and change some of the permissions on the data DB folder so that you can start the MongoD command uh, similarly to how you would do if you're following along with Colt um, using C9 and then I go ahead and install the latest version of node using something called NVM which is node version manager so you'll know everything is done running whenever it tells you that uh, it's now using node version 8.9.3 and then it gives you the uh, little bash terminal thing down here with the uh, dollar sign so at this point we want to run dot space tilde forward slash and then dot 
bash RC. So this is just going to restart the terminal without us having to close it and then reopen it. And if you don't want to type that out, uh, the instructions have it here as well. You can just copy it and paste it. So at this point, everything should be installed. Let's go ahead and double check and make sure that we have the versions that we want for Node and Mongo. So we'll do Node-V and it gives us version 8.9.3. And then we do Mongo dash dash version. It's gonna pull up a little bit of text here. So if you read through it, the first thing you should see is MongoDB shell version 3.6.1. And you can kind of ignore the other stuff. So now we just wanna make sure that MongoD is gonna run. So if you're, you were following Colt, uh, he would want you to create a MongoD file and then you would run it with like dot forward slash MongoD. We don't need to do that. Uh, the way I have it set up, all you have to do is just type mongod and it'll start running it right away. And you'll know it's working if at the very bottom it says waiting for connections on port 27017. Now just remember that whenever you're done working, you want to do control C and stop it. Uh, also, you don't have a lot of space. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to use the dash dash no journal flag whenever you're running it. So mongod no journal. And basically what's happening here is it's not using journaling, which is in a nutshell, a way for MongoDB to ensure that you don't have like corrupt files whenever uh, Mongo gets shut down. And you may have experienced this if you're coming from Cloud9 uh, or if you're just starting out, you may not have encountered it yet. In any event, it does take up some space. And since we only have a couple gigs of free space to use, we wanna be sure and use that wisely. So we use the dash dash no journal to make sure we're not journaling files. There's another one kind of similar is dash dash small files, but uh, I prefer to use the no journal. Okay, so with that working, you can go ahead and close it with control C. So that stops MongoD, uh, which is the Mongo daemon. And now what we want to do is make sure that Node is working. So over here on the left-hand side, if I right-click and refresh, it should make this stuff disappear. So that's just because I deleted those files. Now when I refreshed it, it shows that they're no longer in there. We're actually inside of Workspace. So we can run ls to list all the files in here. And the only thing you'll see is that setup.sh. Well, we're done with that file, so we can do an rm-rf setup.sh, and then we can check again, and it's no longer there. So let's test out Node and just make sure that it's working. Um, so the easiest way to do this is to do like a uh, npm init-y. And so this is just going to skip all the npm init questions uh, and set up a quick node project for you. If you don't, if you haven't seen this command, don't worry. We're just testing everything out. Uh, Colt will teach you about this stuff throughout the course. So now, if we ls, we have a package.json, and if you see here, the main file is called index.js by default. So we'll go ahead and touch index.js to create that file for us. And if we ls, there it is. Okay, so we're not seeing the files over here. We need to right click and refresh. And we're still not seeing it, which is kind of annoying. Uh, it might take a second, let's see. So since we've made all these changes, I think the best thing to do right now is right click on the container name and click on restart. So we'll just do a clean restart of the whole container and then it should load the file that we created and we'll be able to test our uh, node install from there. So we'll give it a second. So it looks like it's probably started. I'm gonna right click, open up the SSH terminal and the terminal's open. I'm still not seeing the file, but if I right click and refresh, there it is. Okay, so that's definitely a caveat. Uh, I would have preferred for it to just show the file uh, instantaneously, but 
considering all the problems that I've encountered with the AWS install of Cloud9, that's not a huge hiccup uh, to have to deal with. So <clears throat> what we did again is we right clicked, we restarted, we let it restart for like 30 seconds or whatever, and then we right click and we refresh and now it's showing us what's going on in here. So if I double click on this index.js file, this is where I'm gonna write the code to test out uh, Node and Express. Now, again, this is just a test, so feel free to just follow along. Uh, I'll update the instructions here with the code so that you can just copy and paste it in. Um, but you're not expected to understand what any of this is doing. We just wanna test to make sure it's working. Okay, so we're gonna do a var express is equal to require express and then var app is equal to express open close parens semicolon after both of those lines and then we'll do a app dot get inside of strings we'll do a forward slash comma function rec res and then we'll do a res dot send is this thing on question mark put a semicolon at the end another semicolon and now we're going to set the port that we're listening on for whenever we start our server so we'll do an app dot listen pass in 3000 and we can actually put a comma after 3000 and do a callback here that says something like uh, console.log uh, server listening on port 3000 just so we know that something is actually happening okay so I saved the file command s or control s on PC I think you probably do it from up here file save as well and now I'm going to go back over to my terminal and if I ls there's that index.js file so if I run node index.js it's going to tell me okay cannot find module express so to fix that I'm going to do an npm i express we'll let express install and now I'll do node index.js and it says server listening on port 3000 okay so how do we preview the server well if you remember up here where it says WDB this tab with the asterisk uh, this is the information about our container that we're going to use to be able to preview our running server if you had closed this by mistake or something like that just go over to your uh, open connection right click on the container name and click on the info link so it loads this up there's a couple different links in here the one we're interested in is the second to last where it says to access your application over HTTPS make sure your application is running on port 3000 which we did and use the following link so let's just click on that link and see what happens lo and behold it says is this thing on so we know that node is working and we know that Express uh, is able to function that's the framework that you're going to be learning throughout the rest of the course so these are all really good signs so that's pretty much it um, I'll be running some tests and looking for commands and things to make your code anywhere experience easier but from what I can tell so far everything is very similar to how Colt does it obviously if you have questions about the dissimilarities just ask them in the Q&A and I'll be sure to help you there um, but I think using code anywhere with the free sign up and the free tier which if you look at the info here uh, you can see it gives you two gigabytes of disk storage um, 250 gig 256 megabytes of ram plus what they're saying is 512 megabytes of swap and then you get sudo access which is root user access uh, ssh access and then access to all http, HTTP and websocket ports um, so you don't have to worry about if you don't understand that stuff, but it's good. They're giving you essentially a small computer with a bunch of stuff on it to allow you to run your code, which is great, and it's free. Um, AWS was getting really annoying. They, I like had signed up for an account so I could use C9, and then I had, of course, given them my credit card to sign up, um, and then they say that you have a 12-month free tier, and within not even a month of using it, they were already sending me emails saying, hey, you're approaching your usage limits, which in my opinion is crazy because I hadn't even done anything with it yet. And they're saying, okay, we're going to start charging you if you go over your limits. 
okay, well, I don't know what those limits are. I don't know when I would reach them or how much they're going to charge me, which is a little bit scary that they're able to do that kind of thing. So I went ahead and closed down my AWS account and started looking for an alternative. And that's how I came up with Code Anywhere. So hopefully this ends up being a good, easy to use alternative uh, to Cloud9. Again, if you have questions, just ask them in the Q&A. And if I come up with any more stuff that I feel is pertinent or helpful, I'll make more videos on it. Uh, all right, that's it. Thanks, guys.